everybody. So no doubt you have turned on the radio late at night and heard the mellifluous sound of our next guest's voice. Delilah. She has been named one of the most influential women in radio, and it's no wonder why. There is something incredibly comforting about her soothing tones. She's a master at lifting our spirits. And today and every day, Delilah has got faith. Watch this. Delilah. Tonight, we're going to talk about developing an attitude of gratitude. For over 30 years, Delilah has been inspiring, comforting, and entertaining listeners across the country during her syndicated nighttime call-in show, simply called Delilah. If you have a story to share, call me, and I'm going to find the perfect song to go with your situation, to go with the person or the situation that you are most grateful for. Talking always came easily for Delilah. She started in radio during high school and has not looked back. In 2016, she was inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame. Well, I was calling because I wanted to tell you about my amazing husband, Skyler. All right. Tell me all about Skyler and why he makes you grin like you just grinned saying his name. When you said his name, do you know you <laughs> smiled? Yes, I always do. Away from the mic, Delilah has led a life that has been filled with joy. Living on a 55-acre farm, she is the mother of 13 children, 10 of them adopted, and many with special needs. But she's also had her share of tragedy. In 2012, she lost her son, Sammy, to complications from sickle cell anemia. And just last year, she revealed her son, Zachariah, died by suicide. Writing in a post, My heart is broken beyond repair, and I cannot fathom how to go on. But I have to believe he is at peace with the Lord and that God will will get us through. This show is about how to quiet that fear, how to calm your heart, how to stop letting the negativity of life steal your joy. And instead, it's about focusing on what you can do to make the world a better place. Whether on her show or in life, Delilah's message is clear. It's one of faith, hope, and love. Wow. I'm here to discuss her new book, One Heart at a Time, is Delilah. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's great to have you here. Thank you. I have heard you a million times. Do you believe this is the first time I've ever, I've ever seen what you look me. like? Yeah, but I've never even seen what you look like before this wow. moment. Did you, have you ever seen Delilah? Like, yes. It's kind of fun. It's like it's a big reveal. It's funny because everybody assumes... Even me, after being in radio all this time, everybody assumes what somebody looks like when you listen to their voice. And so I like to trick people and say, so what, it, you know, what, do, you, what do you think I look like? Right. I've pictured dark hair. Dark hair. Can you order a pizza without the person being like, is this Delilah? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, it's funny, people don't recognize me in public except, you know, in my little community. But they never think of me as Delilah on the radio. It's just, you know, Sonny's mom or Zach's yeah. mom or Shayla's mom or... Or so you're you're a, a little girl from Oregon with the gift of gab, <laughs> right? And take us to third grade when the gift of gab wound Got up. Got me in all back sorts of trouble. Yeah, you know when 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 you've got a kid. How many of you have kids that like never stop talking? <laughs> Are, are any of your my three? mom's my mom's clapping. Yeah, your mom. <laughs> are any of your three like that? Like you? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So they would like the the first thing they do is they move you. Like, they, they would move me in front of the teacher's desk. Like, that's going to shut me up? <laughs> really? That just means I get to turn around and entertain the entire class. <laughs> and, and then they would, like, one time they moved me out into the hall, and I'm like, hi, janitor. Hi. <laughs> and so I had this one teacher in third grade who thought, okay, we're going to show you. If you don't stop talking, I'm going to tape your mouth shut. This is a long time ago. This used to be okay. Yeah. yeah. This is back before they started banning things like that. Yeah. yeah. So she actually did. She put a piece of tape across my mouth. Duct tape. You had the last laugh on that one. I did because duct tape doesn't stick when it's wet. <laughs> so I just, you know, kind of. <laughs> so that made her so mad. Kelly, she took the duct tape and she wrapped it. Oh my gosh! All the way around. Okay, now that now we're getting into true abuse. Yeah, yeah. It was because my hair was this long. Oh. And when 
they finished, it was it was like yours was a few years ago. Like super short. Super short, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. you did wind up having the last laugh because you would go on, like most people in radio, you had your ups and downs, fired 12 times, which I love to point out because <laughs> every successful person I know has had setbacks too. Um, They're not setbacks. They are not a single time that I got fired was a setback. Every time it was God closing a door so that he could open a better one. Yeah. 100% of the time. Yep. Um, and I, I'm sure you've had this, you know, sensation where you get to do the I told you so dance. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I told you so. I told you so. You thought you were going to fire me and you shut me up, but I told you so. Was yours when you were inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame? That was a good I told you so moment. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that was a fun I that told you so That one's pretty moment. strong. Yeah. So, I mean, you go out there, is it eight or nine million listeners? 18, 19, 20, I don't know. It's incredible. I never think about that. Do you think about how many people are at home watching right now? No, it's hard to do the show yeah. if you think about it yeah, like that. Yeah, you can't think about yeah. that. Right? L seriously, when I'm on the air, I think about my friends that are listening. I think about my son, who is in one of the, the, the tall young man there who's a police officer and on, a, on the SWAT team, and he's like, you know, six foot four and so handsome. And I get to say things like, you know... Hi, Sunny Bunny on the air. <laughs> I'm sure he loves that. Yeah, yeah. Mom, stop! Um, but I think about my family that's listening. I think about my friends. She has devoted her whole life to helping others. I mean, from her children uh, to those of us who listen on the radio uh, to 36 trips to Ghana uh, and, and her activism in Africa and elsewhere. We're going to pick it up there when we come back. When I ask Delilah about her life motto, and why she cannot drive by a piece of furniture on the side of the road without oh, stopping. No. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back now talking with radio host Delilah about her new book, One Heart at a Time. The, it, so you have 13 children. You've been Four, married. 14 now. Did, did you succeed in adopting? We're not, adopting? It's not finalized yet, but yeah, it'll be 14 There's, soon. <laughs> you have limitless love in your heart and capacity to... For, for well for well being and caring, uh, so fourteen children. You're on your fourth marriage. Let me ask you because you are you do seem like an expert. I got on fired love. a lot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> look at them all going what? <laughs> but what did the what did the first three teach you about love and relationships? Um, not to go for the gorgeous guy every time. <laughs> <laughs> but my first uh, my first marriage, I truly my husband and I were so in love. And he was also in media, gorgeous, funny, smart. He just had a problem with short-term memory. Uh -huh. He kept forgetting, forgetting he was married to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> and, That's problematic. Yeah, that was a problem. Yeah. Um, and bless him, bless him. God has called him home. And we have an amazing son together mm. that was the biggest blessing in my life. And, uh, and we remained very close um, when we went our separate ways, my second marriage was only six weeks. That and it was. Oh, annulled. that doesn't even count. That doesn't count. No, that, I, I'm sorry, I mentioned it. Yeah, um, my third marriage produced Shayla and Zach, and we adopted three children together. And um, I learned a lot in that relationship. And and today is Take Mom to Work Day. If I had known that, I would have brought my mother-in-law because his parents uh, are still my parents. Aww. So. They not only love their two biological grandchildren, they love all of my kids. And they and there are a lot of them. There are. so many. Yeah. So you've got a 55-acre farm in Washington State. You're from the Pacific Northwest. It, was it just chaos with, with, like, all those children? I know your current husband has five kids of his own. Like, what yeah, is... 19 altogether. What is Thanksgiving like? It's, it's insane. We had 47 people last. Last Thanksgiving was so hard because it was just a month after Zach left us. And so my kids took turns babysitting me, my, my adult children. There was either my sister, Deanna, who is amazing, or one of my adult children in my house probably the first four or five months after Zach left us. Your son, Zach, died by suicide just a year ago. Yeah. You write about it in the book. How hard was that? Hardest thing I've ever done. Um, the publishers had been working with me, and they knew I was just out of it. So they approached my sister, who is my closest confidant. She and my producer, Janie, um, are my, you know, my go-to people. And Deanna said, yeah, I'll help her through this. And I'm like, oh, no, I got to tell Zach's story. Um, 
because he was my, my miracle baby. I wasn't supposed to be able to have any more children, which is why I started adopting. And then at almost 40 years old, with precautions so that it wouldn't happen, um, I found out I was pregnant. Wow. Yeah. So he was my miracle. The amount of love that you've showered upon children, biological and adopted, is really humbling because you've gone over, as I mentioned, to Ghana 36 times? 32. 32 oh, times, yeah, okay. 32. You've adopted special needs children. How, how has that changed you? How have they affected your life? Oh, my gosh. My kids, I mean, I know all parents think their kids are the best, but I truly have the most amazing kids God ever made. Yeah, but is it so hard to have that many children and, and some special needs and from different parts of the world? Uh, well, it's funny how, because God is the one that did this and brought them all together. I never, I only set out to adopt one child. I set out to adopt, a, I got a home study planning to adopt one child, Manny, um, Emmanuel. And then I found out he had siblings in foster care. And anybody who knows anything about the foster care system in the yeah. United States, uh, can I throw some facts out? Yeah. 487,000 children will go to bed tonight not knowing where they will live tomorrow. 487,000, that's 487 comma 000, children are currently in our foster care program and less than 5% will ever have permanency. Wow. 80% of boys in foster care for 18 months or longer end up incarcerated by the age of 25. How is that okay? How is that okay? Right. It's not okay. It's not okay that, that foster care workers are trained and taught that you keep the family unit together at any cost. And so they don't terminate parents' rights, even if they abuse two, three, four times. Even if they have no right to be parents. Listen, exactly. I've got to pause you there. We're going to squeeze in a quick commercial break. Uh, and when we come back, we will talk about Delilah's secret for staying at the top of the radio charts and the thing about the furniture. I have to know. <laughs> I thought we moved past that. No, no, I got to ask about it. We'll be All right back. Right. Welcome back, everyone. We're here talking with radio host Delilah. And I've got to ask you, so what is it? You cannot drive by somebody's old piece of furniture that's fallen apart that's on the side of the road? Why? Because uh, I have to take it home and refinish it. <laughs> I do, yeah. And, and not just furniture, bicycles. and. You don't buy new things. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I said, do, do you ever, like, go to Saks Fifth Avenue with all She's a very successful woman. She said she's, what? Never been to Saks. Never been to Saks. No. I refer to it as the mothership, so I'm in a different <laughs> category. For, um, me, for me, it's, it's, it's goodwill. Yeah, I know that's, and, and you've lived that life, and, and a life of faith, which is really at the heart of the book as well. Yes. How important yes. has God and your belief in a higher power been to your success and your happiness? To, uh, to everything. He's the reason I'm here. He's the reason I breathe. Um, he's the reason that I wrote the book. Um, and I say he, meaning it, you know, God is everything. Since I'm created in his image, he's as much she as he is he. Uh, but that's just the comfortable way we usually refer to, to God. Um, and I didn't become a woman of faith until I was in my 20s, late 20s. It was after my brother Matt uh, disappeared. My brother and his wife disappeared in a plane accident. Uh, he was an officer in the Air Force, and their plane literally vanished in thin air. Um, and it took several years to find it. And it was that experience that, that drove me to my knees. And um, in searching for answers, I found the great I am. And had I not, I would not be here. Yeah. I could not have gotten through losing Sammy. Um, I your, couldn't. Your first son who died yeah. of sickle cell anemia. Uh, that was in 2012. And without God, without the prayers of my listeners and my friends and my producer and my husband, and I would not be before you today. For sure. I, I would be at home in bed. Mm -hmm. you know? The book is very open about your faith and about your urge to reconnect people, not through politics, no, but through no. honest discussions. Is and there love. anybody who thinks that politicians are going to change our world? No, no. If we're going to have a better world for our kids and our grandkids, we have to do it by loving people and engaging with people one heart at a time. And that's, that's the whole message in the book. And 
And that's the title of the book as well. Don't, again, it's One Heart at a Time. It's already shooting up the charts. It's going to be number one. You know that. It's Delilah. Thank you for being Thank here. You, Thank you, Megan. Thank you. We'll be right back.